You guys remember the good old days where you pop in an SNES game, play it for a bit, and turn off the system and come back to it later, only to remember, wait a minute, I gotta start from the beginning? There are no saves? So, in the spirit of that retro gaming goodness, I decided to play through the entirety of Echoes of Wisdom on launch day in one single stream. Throughout the video, I'll be giving you my thoughts on the game, as well as how long the entire run took me, and trust me, you're gonna want to stick around till the end. Obviously, there will be spoilers, I did play through the entire thing after all. Because it was such a long stream, I lost the first hour due to not hitting the start recording button as soon as I started the stream. Yeah, I'm an idiot. But thankfully, I have the vertical stream footage, so we'll be using some of that for at least the first hour of the run, and then it'll be normal for the rest of the video. First things first, I was a bit tentative about playing this game due to how it looked in the trailers. See, I'm a huge fan of traditional Zelda, and Tears of the Kingdom didn't really do it for me. I've been wanting them to make a return to the classic formula, and this game looked to be anything but that. I mean, seriously, look at this. What am I playing? Minecraft? As we get into more of the video, though, you'll start to see me appreciate this game more and more, and why, overall, I think this is a step in the right direction for the Zelda franchise, even if it doesn't get everything right. You start off playing as my boy, Lunk, which I was super excited about. The game feels snappy and smooth, and it's using the Link's Awakening engine, which feels just as good as it did before. After we make quick work of the boss, we sadly say goodbye to playing as Link. Link, don't make me play as Zelda, please. No! Damn, he tried to kill her ass. And begin our adventure with Zelda. We get imprisoned after the king gets sucked up like a slushy on a hot summer day. <laughs> by the evil king that replaces him, and so we meet our companion for the rest of the game. Try. She's a lot better than Fee, thankfully. This is where we get introduced to the Echoes mechanic. Zelda can basically replicate any monster she defeats, and certain items as well. As you can imagine, this allows for the puzzle solving to be extremely diverse, much like Tears of the Kingdom. Except this game does it better than Tears of the Kingdom, for a few reasons I'll get to later. After that little stealth section, Impa puts the friggin' beat down on a few soldiers chasing us, Oh, yo, but let me play as Impa, bro. And off we go into the overworld. After exploring for a bit and also seeing how big the freaking map is. Oh my God, this game is kind of huge. <laughs> Look at the map. Oh shit. We make our way into our first dungeon and the first rift. Already having dedicated dungeons in this game is a huge improvement over Tears of the Kingdom. It's what I've been asking for for such a long time, and I'm glad they've made a return, even if it's not in a mainline Zelda game. And like I said before, the new Echo system and Try mechanics allow for some really cool puzzle solving, so that's icing on the cake. These mechanics do absolutely take some getting used to, though, and the whole stacking beds thing to create a bridge gets old really fast. Anyway, a little bit of puzzle solving later, and we fight our first mini-boss, Lunk? A pretty strong start, I must say. This is where I begin to realize this game wasn't exactly going to be a cakewalk. Much like Breath of the Wild was the first challenging game in the Zelda series. Damn, dude, he's kicking my ass. Okay, Link is way stronger than Zelda, let me just say that right now. And we might be here for longer than I thought. Link was giving me the mother effin' business. And Zelda's toolkit isn't nearly as easy to get used to as Link's. I mean, we've been playing for the guy as years. This is Zelda's first real solo dolo game. Of course he's going to kick my ass. But with enough effort... We beat him and get rewarded with Sword Fighter mode, arguably the best part of this game. After that, we quickly get the boss key and fight our very first boss. All of a sudden, I'm loving the game much more when having access to Link. Fighting with Echoes is pretty lame overall and not very engaging, as you'll see throughout the video. The Echo AI isn't exactly amazing, and during combat, you pretty much want to turn into Link as soon as possible. We make quick work of the boss, and that's one dungeon out of I don't know how many down. After that, I get lost exploring the world for a bit while trying to make it to my next objective. I know, time is of the essence here, but I had to at least enjoy the game a little bit. At around the two and a half hour mark, I finally began to figure out the way to Gerudo Desert. And a good thing too, because we still have a long way to go. We get introduced to the smoothie mechanic, which is basically just simplified cooking from Breath of the Wild, and try to make our way to the second dungeon before we get told, per usual, that we're not allowed in, because the Gerudo freaking hate foreigners. Great! Shortly after, we save a Gerudo that looks like royalty, and surprise, surprise, she is. But the rest of them still don't trust us, and so we have to prove ourselves. Zelda shows she ain't no slouch, and enters the second rift to do so. 
And this is where we're introduced to arguably the most annoying part of the game, and what I like to call the Twilight Zone. It's pretty much exactly like Twilight Princess's bug collecting, except you don't get turned into a wolf, and they do this to you every time before you access a new dungeon. Could have done without this being in the game, but it is what it is. After I have a ton of trouble with this little puzzle here, we collect all five of Tri's friends and finally gain access to the second dungeon around our five? Yeah, we better pick up the pace. Upon entering, we see my favorite boy, Luck. Almost an hour of puzzle solving later, and it's round two, baby. Had a lot less trouble with this link this time around, probably because I actually had access to sword fighting mode. We pick up the bow and continue on with the dungeon. I get stuck on this puzzle for a bit, and this is what I mean by there's some jank here and there when it comes to this game's mechanics. There's a lot of weird ways that I end up solving puzzles in this game that don't feel at all intended, but then again, maybe in a way that is actually intended. Fuck. What? How did that work? That is definitely not how that is supposed to work, but hey. Either way, we take those and onto the second boss we go. Come say hi. Come say hi. Ugh. You guys see this guy? This is where the difficulty curve got much, much harder all of a sudden. The first phase is easy enough. Summon echoes, avoid the attacks, and smack them up with Link every now and then. Not a problem. The second phase, though? He can fly now? What the fuck? <laughs> the problem is he's in the air, and at this point in the game, I didn't have many great aerial echoes to counteract him. The bow and arrow wasn't high enough, and so all my options to get damage in were effectively worthless. Honestly, just kill me. This is a fucking chalk fight. It was easy, and then it got really hard when he started fucking flying. We need to go uh, upgrade our shit. On attempt number two, though, we figured something interesting out. If he's diving toward you and you put an object in his way, it effectively stuns him, giving you time to dish out damage. I didn't figure this out until the very end of the fight, as you can see, but there is more complexity in the combat than meets the eye. At almost around hour seven, the second dungeon goes down. Knowing that if I was going to beat this anytime soon, I needed to start slamming some dungeons. We immediately made our way to Lake Hylia. Yet again, there's some miscellaneous stuff we have to do before gaining access to the third dungeon. Yada yada, these people hate each other. Yada yada, we need them to make up. Yada yada, Jabu Jabu emotes on these fools. Dang, he ate the shit out of them. <laughs> he, d he danced on their ass. And we get them to do the thing we need to to access the dungeon. But not before we gotta collect five of Tri's friends again. Woo, I'm telling you, this part gets old. If we can rescue them all, we can fix this rift. Bro, these, oh. These parts are the platforming hell. At least we get rewarded with a cool boss fight before the actual dungeon. This dungeon thankfully goes way smoother than the previous one, and I don't get stuck on any one puzzle for very long. Funny, considering water temples are usually notoriously the difficult ones. Although this part was pretty frustrating. I'm telling you, the platforming in this one feels so jank at times. Oops, okay, that's my bad. There was no mini boss for this dungeon though, so I think that contributed to it feeling so short, and the boss fight was so much easier than the last guy. I also want to take a moment just to appreciate how well done the boss fights are in this game. The first one was a bit lackluster admittedly, but that second boss was a huge step up, and now this third one was done really creatively as well, and you're going to see how that continues to ramp up from here on out. Well, except for the final boss, but we'll save that for when we get there. With three dungeons beat at the eight and a half hour mark, I was thinking I had at least four more to go, and I wasn't far off. We needed to go faster. With another rift sealed, I enjoy a nice little concert before Wright, the guy who got consumed by the rift near the beginning of the game, reappears. He takes a visit to the sword shop, and so do I. If we're going to beat this game, we got to make sure our sword fighting form is in tip-top shape. Off he goes to the castle to beat up the imposters, and off we go to follow him for our next dungeon. Some dungeon spelunking later in Hyrule Castle, and we get our boss key. Thankfully, this dungeon was pretty short and seemed to be one of those transitionary dungeons to lead you into the second act of the game. That being said, I think this boss was one of the coolest in the game. I mean, just look at this. What more needs to be said? He ain't got nothing on me. He ain't got nothing on me. Now, I do need to mention that the power went off during this boss fight because of a certain Hurricane Helen. Thankfully, it wasn't more than for a few seconds, and my computer continued recording somehow regardless. Honestly, would have been pretty pissed if that's how my run ended, but that's not how we went out. 
<laughs> Shit. The internet, no! Fuck. Welcome back. Bro, I, the power just went out. That was kind of nutty. I'm surprised my computer didn't turn off. The run continues, baby. We got right back into the swing of things and finished up that boss, and now I was determined to finish this game before the hurricane messed up my chances. I was sure that I was at least halfway through the game by this point, so by those calculations, nine more hours to go. Lunk makes another appearance and gets snatched up again, which made my theory even more solid, and so with renewed energy, I was ready to keep on keeping on. Oh, give me a break. Why is he using a freaking claw? We're told to mend three more rifts connected to the goddesses to gather sanctums in order to beat the fiend creating all these rifts, and with Zelda's fashion change, even she's ready to take on whatever comes next. First up on the list, Elden Volcano. We climb up the mountain in the cheesiest way known to man, do some more godforsaken try collecting, finish that up, then do even more try collecting. Oh, not another one. I just did this! Dude, this is the first time the game makes you do this twice before the next dungeon. I swear the game knows I'm trying to beat it in one sitting at this point. After doing that twice over, we feed some Goron some rock schmeat, and finally the Goron chieftain leads the way to the next dungeon. And at around hour 11, we begin work on dungeon number 5. Now again, this dungeon had yet another difficulty jump. I get it, we're in Act 2 now, but dude, if the platforming wasn't difficult before, just look at what I have to deal with now. Either way, Link appears as a mini-boss once more, and it's just the same shit, different day. Upon defeating him, we gain access to bombs, which isn't as useful as you'd think, since I've had bombs in the form of an Echo for hours now. Whatever, at least I have them in Sword Fighter mode too. Now we just need to get the boss key and get over there, and we should be good to go. With the boss key obtained, I figure out the cheesiest way to get through this lava-filled mess. You know, as annoying as the platforming can be in this game, at least they provide you with decent solutions to just bypass it all if you don't feel like doing it the intended way. And finally, it's boss time. Volvagia. Now this was one badass boss. Keep in mind, I've just been bum-rushing the main story in order to beat this in one sitting, so we're not exactly maxed out in terms of power. This boss took me around 7 minutes to beat, and I had to utilize sleeping tech in order to beat it. What is sleeping tech, you ask? Sleeping on a bed in the middle of the boss fight to recover health because I ran out of potions. Pretty advanced tech if you ask me. Probably wouldn't have been able to beat this boss without that in all honesty, but with enough perseverance, he goes down, and we earn the first of three sanctions, Din's Fire. Two more to go, and at around the 12 hour mark. Zelda gets tossed by some Gorons, and afterwards we quickly make our way to dungeon number 6. To Mount Laneru we go. We meet one of the cutest characters in the game. Seriously, look at this guy, he's cute as hell. And then he leads us to yet another rift. Can we guess what we're about to start doing? Yeah, more try collecting. At least we only have to do it once this time instead of twice. Again, worst part of the game by far, because it involves doing the jankiest platforming in existence. After we finish up doing that, it's time for the next dungeon. This one had some cool puzzles involving heating and cooling up certain rooms to unlock small keys and new areas to explore. Like I said, traditional dungeons have made a comeback, and they've made a comeback in an epic fashion, so if you're trying to experience a traditional Zelda where you actually play as Zelda, this game might be for you, but you just gotta get used to stacking beds a lot if you're gonna play this game. Some puzzle solving later, we grab the boss key and we find Bigfoot. No, seriously, look at him. Bigfoot as a boss? Come on, how is this not an immediate buy? Oh, score chill? Well, whatever, close enough. This boss didn't give me too much trouble. Makes a fire and ice magic along with some sword strikes, and he goes down. One more to go. At this point, it was beginning to get hard to look at the screen. God, I was tired. We had to hurry. Straight to the fair and wetlands we went, and there we encountered the Deku Scrubs. I have to say, I missed having these guys in Zelda games. Probably because my favorite game is Majora's Mask. What's your favorite Zelda game? Leave it down in the comments. After talking to a few of these scrubs, we figure out we need a membership card in order to get to the next rift, and there's one scrub that has one in the southwest. So we get there, only to have to find more of Tri's friends instead of the card. Should have known by this point. Now what is surprising is that they make you do it again. Dude, I was sick of it by this point. Literally, this is the biggest negative of this game and the biggest reason for why I wouldn't recommend it to someone. Do I gotta collect five thingies here? Oh yeah. Yeah, they do this way too much. Way too much. It's like, dude, okay, holy shit. I get it, your friends are trapped for the 18th time. 
Afterward, we get imprisoned again because these Deku scrubs are addicted to cotton candy. Doesn't look like any cotton candy I've ever seen before, just saying. I'm not really sure how I feel about being imprisoned twice in one game. Feels like we already went through this whole song and dance once before at the very beginning with the king. Not sure if they were just running out of ideas here or what, but either way, it was just another obstacle in our way to finishing this game. I got stuck on this puzzle here for a while, which required some thought to solve, something my brain is severely lacking 14 hours in. Hell, I even walk right outside thinking I'll be fine only to get imprisoned again. Oh, what the fuck? But eventually, we prevail and gain our membership card, gaining us access to the final dungeon. After jankily solving the initial puzzle outside the temple, Well, it feels kind of cheese, but if it works, it works. I immediately get stuck right off the rip. Because you know what? We're going to beat it in one fucking stream. You hear me? All three of us. I'm going to use the power that... What, what? I'm stuck. But after approaching from a different angle, we quickly start making progress. This, I would say, is the temple I got stuck on the most. The puzzles were the toughest to figure out than they had ever been. Now, I don't know if that was because this was one of the final temples, or I was 15 hours into streaming. Either way, I had some help from the boys in chat. Huge shout out to Nerve and Sam for helping me figure out the puzzles in the late, late hours of the night and early hours of the morning. I don't think I could have done it without you guys. I used the power of Beyblades to solve one of the final puzzles we need to move on, get the small key to make our way to the boss key so that we fight a mini boss? Yeah, this dungeon required a pretty tough boss just to get the boss key, but with our advanced bed tech and the power of 16 hours on our side, he was nothing but small potatoes. Let me sleep, bitch. Okay. This is actually working. Wow. Oh my gosh. 16 hours. Boss key, and that's just for the fucking boss key, bro. Oh my gosh. Wow, this this was a dungeon and a fucking half. After that boss, we needed to recoup, make some smoothies, then head back to take down the dungeon boss. Now this dude was cool as shit. I totally called him being a spider, but the bosses in this game really are spectacular across the board. Nice. It's actually a cool ass fucking boss fight, holy shit. This is epic, this is epic. After giving him the business, he goes down just like everybody else. And that's the final sanctum obtained. Now we finally beat the game. Uh oh, okay, this is the end. Never have I been happier to see the final boss. <laughs> oh boy. After almost getting murdered by Zelda, we start making the final preparations for the last act of the game. We wake up in Hyrule Castle Town only to find out we were playing right into the enemy's hands all along. <sighs> Typical Zelda fashion, to be honest. Our new objective? Join forces with Link to defeat Null, the true final boss of this game. I won't lie, my hopes started going up that I'd get to play as Link toward the end of the game, and with this newfound excitement, I had the power to push through the final act. Off to the Eternal Forest we went to do some miscellaneous padding to make the game feel longer than it is, and... Whoa! The Great Deku Tree! There you are, fake Zelda. Prepare to taste my blade! or my staff, or whatever, just come get this business. And she ran away. Well, guess what? She ain't going nowhere, because this stream ain't ending until this game is beaten. Our first attempt fighting her goes pretty well. Switch. Uh-oh. Holy shit, I'm gonna fucking die. Bro, like, holy shit, I need more potions. Up my asshole immediately. Dude, holy shit. Oh my gosh, she gets so f***ing aggressive. But then she really started turning it on. We needed to change our strategy, but at this point I didn't feel like going to make more potions because I was so freaking tired. We just needed to play cleaner, and play cleaner we did. Down the fake Zelda goes, and oh my gosh, Link! Time for us to save him for once, and we get to rearm him? Sick. We're totally gonna get to play as a- We lost access to the best part of the game. Not gonna lie, I would've been so pissed if I went through the effort of upgrading Sword Fighter mode just to not be able to use it for the final part of the game. And this is where the game starts to show a huge weakness. See, playing as Zelda is just not that fun, especially when you're no longer able to transform as Link. Combat as Zelda is just summon an Echo, sit there and wait while you watch Link do all the cool shit. 
One of my biggest criticisms of this game for sure, but hey, we're in the final stretch, so it is what it is. Some crazy platforming shenanigans later, and some epic duo puzzle solving with my boy Link, and we make it to the final battle. This is it, 17 hours in, and here we are at the final battle. What a journey this has been so far, and hey, if you've made it this far, I'm gonna need you to subscribe so you can see all the other crazy videos I got planned for the future, okay? Now, let's finish this game, Link. Everybody's getting sucked up into rifts. Oh my god, all that work. Whatever. We finish Null off, all the rifts go too. Thus began one of the longest final boss battles in Zelda history. Listen, I don't know if it was just because I was streaming for 17 hours, but this felt like one of the most epic battles in Zelda history. That's not to say the final boss itself was exceedingly epic, more so the circumstances surrounding the boss were cool. My marathon stream- Anyway, there was nothing really special that I had to do during this fight other than survive. The other bosses throughout the game required you to employ a specific strategy in order to win, whether that be electrifying them before going in for big damage or countering with an echo as they slam into you. Yeah, none of that really applied to this fight. I just kind of sat there and occasionally summoned while again, Link did all the cool looking shit. I think this just goes into Zelda on her own not being that fun to play overall, but it is what it is. I also lost track of how many phases this final boss had. I mean, just look at this. Tell me that's the end. Oh my gosh. Oh no, we need long. Now we got a solo dolo and bring it on. Can I fucking celebrate yet? Damn! <laughs> it's almost 6 a.m. I don't think it's fucking over. I think we have a more final form. Oh my gosh. This is it. This is it, boys. This is literally it. This is it. The finale. And it's still not over. Oh, let's go. Come I have on. to say, at least the music during this part was freaking epic. And with the power of everybody who helped me complete this run on stream, all the super chats. This one's for Nerve. That one's for Sam. We don't got one for Duck or Fire. They shit on this game the entire time. Fuck them. This one's for Adam. Get him, Link. Fucking get him. Get his ass. Get his ass! Bro, some of my forearm. Are... Oh shit, he's not done yet. Dude, holy moly. What is this? I'm getting scared, bro. Oh dude, please no. No, 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 not like this. Not like this, not like this. That's gotta be it. What? What? What am I supposed to do? What do you want me to do? We finally took down Null. And since I've been practicing to be the world record masher, ooh, this part wasn't even a problem, baby. Fastest masher in the world, bitch! Fastest masher in the world! 17 hours and 37 minutes. What a crazy run. Again, thank you to everyone who stuck around and came by and watched the stream. I couldn't have done it without you guys. A huge shout out to my channel members. You guys make all the time I spend doing runs like this possible. All in all, I really enjoyed this game. Sure, it had its flaws, and from the trailers, I had my reservations. But even playing it from start to finish, I really had a good time with it. If I hadn't, I don't think I would have been able to play it through in one sitting. So, would I recommend this game? Honestly, yes. As long as you can get on board with the fact that playing with Zelda isn't going to be as fun as playing with Link. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the full watch. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, because if you don't, Lunk is about to be mighty upset with you, okay? Oh, the prime and energy and null, dude. Oh, the dopamine is hitting me. Oh, the dopamine is hitting me, bro. Ah. Oh. Let's go. Let's go. In one fucking stream, dude. Holy shit.
Bro, this game gets an it gets an eight, bro. I will say that final boss kind of eh. Playing with Zelda is is what sucks. Like honestly, like it just kind of sucks because you just summon and then you just like run around. Versus you look at all the shit Link's doing. <laughs>